Hello, welcome to Biostudy Parshala and I am Nilanjana. Today we will learn about pertussis toxin pathway and NO signaling that is nitric oxide signaling pathway. These two pathways are from GPCR mediated pathways. So I have a suggestion to those who haven't watched the previously uploaded videos of the GPCR mediated pathways. You may watch those videos and I will provide the links on description box below or you may get the links on i button above so let's get started so first what is pertussis toxin pertussis toxin is an exotoxin that means those toxins which are secreted by an organism here the causal organism is bordetella pertussis and this toxin shows its effect on respiratory tract it causes whooping cough in human body this toxin shows gpcr mediated pathway mainly gi alpha subset mediated pathway here gi alpha shows its inhibitory effect on effector that is adenylate cyclase when it is in gtp bound state but it cannot show any inhibitor effect on ac when it is gdp bound state so now we will see how this pertussis toxin shows its effect by the GPCR mediated pathway. First one is pertussis toxin is absent. That means here ligand is absent. Okay. So here no ligands are available to bind with the receptor. And here the receptor is GPCR. Right. And this GPCR shows G protein activity by GI alpha subset. Now this GI alpha subset shows the GTP bound state when here no ligand is present and the GTP bound state of the alpha subset shows its inhibitory effect on its effector that is adenylate cyclase. We all know that adenylate cyclase show its activity by the production of the CAMP from ATP. So here the GI alpha subset bound with the GTP shows the inhibitory effect on AC and the inhibited AC cannot show the production of the cyclic AMP. So the intracellular concentration of the cyclic AMP will be reduced or no cyclic AMP concentration will be observed. If there is no or very less concentration of the cyclic AMP will be observed then the further procedures cannot be observed because if the concentration of the cyclic AMP is very low or no cyclic AMP then it cannot activate the PKA. So the no activation of the PKA but the results no responses. So here no responses will be observed when the pertussis toxin is absent. Now we will see when the pertussis toxin is present. So here pertussis toxin is present that means ligands are available to bind with its receptor and when this ligand binds to its receptor it causes the ADP ribosylation on AI subset. This ADP ribosylation occurs when this alpha I subset in its GDP bound state and this ADP ribosylation occurs mainly on cysteine rich residue of this alpha I subset. Now this ADP ribosylation of the alpha I subset causes no inhibition on adenylate cyclase. That means adenylate cyclase is not inhibited by the alpha I. So AC will show its activity. Now this AC converts ATP in cyclic AMP. So the intracellular concentration of the cyclic AMP will be high. So the high CMP or the high cyclic AMP concentration will show further responses. That means this high CMP shows the activation of PKA that is protein kinase A. Now this protein kinase A shows the phosphorylation to its targeted molecule or targeted proteins. Now this phosphorylation of the targeted proteins shows excessive fluid loss excessive mucus and electrolyte secretion on airways and shows the whooping cough disease in human body. So this is for pertussis toxin. 
Now we will see the NO signaling that is nitric oxide signaling pathway. So let's see. Nitric oxide pathway, it is GQI, sorry, GQ alpha mediated pathway. That means the GI alpha Q subset mediated pathway and it results in muscle relaxation. And this procedure shows the involvement of two kinds of cell that is one endothelium cell and second one is smooth muscle cell. And here one eye cyclist acts as the effector. Okay. So now we will see the pathway. First, you can see it is blood vessel. This portion is endothelial cell and this portion is smooth muscle cell. So now we will see the nitric oxide signaling pathway in detail. So it is the nitric oxide signaling pathway. Here acetylcholine acts as ligand and the acetylcholine binds to its receptor that is GQPCR. Right? This binding of the ligand to its receptor results the dissociation of the GDP and association of the GTP with the alpha Q subset. Now this GTP bound state of the alpha Q results the activation of the PLC that is phospholipase C. So this activated phospholipase C now acts on PIP2 and results in the formation TAG and IP3. TAG is hydrophobic molecule that's why it remains attached to the lipid bilayer while IP3 is hydrophilic molecule that's why it solubilizes within the cytosol. Now this solubilized IP3 goes to SER that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum and results in releasing huge amount of calcium ions. Now this calcium ions move from here to cytosol. Now this calcium binds to calmodulin and forms calcium calmodulin complex. Now this calcium calmodulin complex further activates enosynthase that is nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Now this enzyme further shows the reaction or further catalyzes the reaction that is arginine with the oxygen and produces citrulline and nitric oxide. Now this nitric oxide diffuses from endothelial cell to the smooth muscle cell and this nitric oxide activates guanine cyclase. Now this activated guanine cyclase produces cyclic GMP from GTP. Now the high amount of cyclic GMP activates PKG that is protein kinase G. Now this protein kinase G further phosphorylates its targeted molecule or targeted protein which shows muscle relaxation and this muscle relaxation further shows the dilation of the blood vessel. If the concentration of the cyclic GMP will very high within the cell, it can be reverted back to GMP that is guanyl monophosphate by the enzyme activity CGMP dependent PDE that is phosphodiesterase. So this is how the nitric oxide signaling pathway actually works. So this is for today's session guys. Thank you for watching this video. And if this video seems to be helpful for you, you can share this video as much as possible and subscribe this channel for supporting and don't forget to hit the bell icon below. So till then, be safe and be healthy.